بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد شيخ الاسلام ابن تيميه رحمه الله تعالى سن ان عقيده الواسطيه he said rahimahullah ta'ala fa sunnatu tafsir alquran wa tubayyinuhu wa tadullu alayhi wa tu'abbiru anhu that the sunnah of the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam <coughs> it explains the quran that's one of the ways in which we get tafsir al quran First, it's tafsir bi tafsir or ayah bi, you know, an ayat in the Quran that explains another ayat in the Quran. And then also, if we don't find another ayat that makes that clear, then also from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from ahadith. And those are some of the ways of explaining kitab Allah. وَتُبَيِّنُهُ And he said, and it also, it makes it clear. So it explains it, but it also clarifies things that might have been general. وَتُدُلُّ عَلَيْهِ That the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it also is evidence and shows the Quran, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Aqimu salat. Allah commands us to, to pray. But we know the how to pray from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's both evidence and it's also the details for that. And it explains it. And this is because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't speak from his desires. As Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَا يَنْتَقُوا عَنَ الْحَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُحَىٰ That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he didn't speak from his desires. And that verily, his speech was revelation. So the sunnah is, is wahi, like the Quran is wahi. However, the Quran is direct speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is the perfect speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is preserved. The sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said and his so his statements his actions his uh, things that he approved of and allowed and his his uh, characteristics that those things make up the sunnah and they are also if they are affirmed from the sahih hadith a hadith then they are a type of revelation. However, a difference, of course, is that for the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, when we read a hadith, that it is not an obligation for us to, uh, for those who believe that you need to be on tahara to uh, read the Quran. It is not like the Quran in that, in that sense, that you need to be on tahara. Although some of the Salaf used to make wudu before reading a hadith, and this is how they. Uh, how firm upon the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu they were and how they respected uh, the signs of the religion and from the highest signs is the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu after the Quran of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala the speech of Allah and this is also because the Prophet Sallallahu not only that what he, he mentioned that he didn't speak from his desires and that it was revelation and that we have to follow the sunnah is that also 
the Prophet والسلام, was the most God fearful. He had the most taqwa. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna atqaakum wa'alamakum billahi ana. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said in Sahih Muslim from the hadith of Abi Dhar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he alayhi salatu wa salam said, Verily, the most God-fearing from amongst you and the most knowledgeable from amongst you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is myself. So that affirms from us from the sunnah and then even from our own logic, of course, that the NBA, alayhim afdal salatu wasalam, were the closest to Allah and the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of his creatures. And Although the angels have a high station and they don't disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the NBA, they have a higher status. And that is because they had the potential to make disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but instead they were the best of the creation, with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being the last of the prophets, alayhi afdal salatu wa salam, and the best of them. So we should follow the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ as we are following the Qur'an because it is wahi and it explains and clarifies the Qur'an and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the Prophet ﷺ, he says وَمَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَاهَكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that whatever the messenger came with then you should accept it. And whatever he prohibited, prohibited you from, then you should avoid it and stay clear of it. So those are just some of the important aspects of knowing that the Sunnah explains the Quran and that the Sunnah and Islam are one and that we need Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and as Imam Babahari said, Rahimahullah ta'ala, a Sunnah to huwa al Islamu huwa Sunnah wa Sunnah to hi al Islam. That Islam is the Sunnah and the Sunnah is Islam. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.